Hello, and welcome to this supplemental training video on the SU-25T. In fact, it's going to be more of a Flaming Cliffs 3 training video. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions in the past about, hey, you're doing the SU-25T. I'd love it if you could do something about the A-10A. I'd love it if you could do something about the F-15. Uh, all of the other Flaming Cliffs planes, uh, why haven't you done any tutorials around them? And the reason is pretty simple. All of them share a common control scheme. Most of them have the exact same controls for the similar functionality. For example, I'm going to go into the mission editor. I'm going to go ahead and open our SU-25T training map. We're going to zoom in here on our SU-25T. I'm actually going to change it to an A-10A. So this is a Flaming Cliffs plane. I'm going to go ahead and click the green button over here to launch the mission. Then I'm going to get out of your way. And we're going to see what happens with how I start up this plane. Now as a prerequisite, I hope that you've already watched the SC-25T training video, but you'll notice that the process is gonna be exactly the same. I'm gonna go ahead and select my pilot in command for the A-10A and click on OK. And you'll notice that here we are in our office, our cockpit. Our mouse will let us look around just like the SC-25T. We can zoom in and out using our mouse wheel can also decouple our mouse from the camera if we want, left, alt, and C. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my number pad to move my, move my view around just a little bit. And I'm going to take a look at our instruments down here. So here is our attitude indicator. We've got our HSI down here. All of our engine gauges are over here on the lower right of our front panel. We've got an altimeter. We have a vertical speed indicator our fuel gauges. We've got some stores information over here. You can see the same thing in the SU-25T. It's just in a slightly different location. We'll get into that in a future tutorial. Our gear lever and our flaps indicator right here. These are our gear lights, so they'll show you what position the gear is in. And there is a flap switch in the A-10A. It's down here. However, it doesn't animate, so your primary um, way of checking what position your flaps are in is going to be your indicator. And let's go ahead and get this plane started. First step in the SU-25T, same in the A-10A, same in any of the other Flaming Cliffs 3 planes, is to get our electrical systems on. We're going to hold right shift and L. You'll notice that our HUD has powered on. We have a couple of indicator lights down here. Our Needles here on our attitude indicator and HSI have uncaged and kind of moved away. And our landing gear lights are showing that they are down and indicating, which is good. At this point, if we want to, we can hold down left alt and hit the single quote, bring up our ordinance menu. And uh, again, it's a different plane silhouette here. However, we can pick stores for any of these stations and the numbers, of course, align with the numbers on this little diagram up here. I'm going to leave it empty because it's just for this tutorial. At this point, I'm going to want to get my plane started, so I'm going to get it started the exact same way that we got the SU-25T started. I'm going to hold down my right alt button and tap on home. That'll get our left engine started. And you'll see that the APU kicks on. This is the auxiliary power unit. You don't need to know too much about it. This just provides power to the plane so that it can start its engines on its own. Once this gets to 100%, you're going to see PSI here kind of kick up a bit, and then that's going to kick on our turbo fans, and then you'll see these dials start to move as well. So there we go to 100, PSI, and our dial here for our turbo fan RPM starts kicking up. And now that the hydraulic systems are on, our flaps come up, and you'll notice that our joystick actually centered itself as well. Our fans are going to get to about 60% here, and then the APU is going to kick off. For our purposes in this plane, you can think of the APU as your engine start light. So once this starts spooling down, we can start our right engine. There we go. I'm going to hold down right control and tap on home. You'll notice the APU powers back on. Once it gets to 100%, again, our PSI will kind of kick up our fans will start spooling up, and then our engine temperature will start rising. Now you'll also notice that very similarly to the SU-25T, our HUD is a little bit dark. So if you want to brighten it, same keyboard command as the SU-25T, right control, right shift, 
and then tap or hold H to brighten it, and then change that to right alt, right shift H, tap it or hold it to dim it. So I'm gonna go ahead and brighten it back up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close our canopy. Again, similar to the SU-25T, left control and C. And I'll jump to our external view. We can watch our canopy close. And our engines are on and we're good to go as far as startup is concerned. The next steps in the SU-25T are to get our exterior lights on. And you guess it, same keyboard commands. We're gonna tap right control, hold it down, and tap on the L key. And we'll notice that our position lights turn on. So we've got a green light on this side, a red light on that side, white light at the tail. So let's go ahead and right control L. Now in the A10, slightly different. If you tap it a second time, your position lights stay on, but you also get strobes. And you'll notice that they're blinking on the wing tips and at the rear of the plane. And then the third time, we'll turn all of the lights off. We want at least one stage on for taxi. And then in the A10A, let's go ahead and take a look down here, taxi light is here on the front nose wheel, and it's gonna be right alt L, just like in the SU25T. That's our taxi setting. If we tap it again, we'll go into landing setting. And you'll notice that now we've got a second light on, as well as this one here shifting just slightly. And then we'll hit it a third time to extinguish both lights. But I do want my taxi light on for taxi. Jump back into the cockpit, we'll recenter our view. SU25T controls for taxiing, brakes, everything are the exact same in the A10A. The plus and minus keys on your number pad will increase your power setting. So in this case, I'm gonna tap those just a couple of times, get it to about 70%. We'll start our, our rolling. And then I'll tap the minus key once just to slow down the thrust. And then here I'll use my Z key, same as the SU25 to align myself with the taxiway center line. And then the X key to adjust to the right if I need to. W is my wheel brake. A good rule of thumb is to taxi no faster than a brisk walk. That way you have enough time to react in case small dog runs out in front of the plane or somebody comes and buzzes right in front of you and scares the heck out of you. You'll have enough time to spool the engines back and stop in time to not hit them. Go ahead and tap our Z key just to maintain center line alignment as we hit that little dog leg. You'll notice that our mirrors are active. Some people like them, some people don't like them. Uh, it actually slows some people's machines down. If you want to hide them or stow them, go ahead and tap the M key and they'll get up out of your way, just like in the SU-25T. I know you guys are seeing the theme here. I keep repeating, just like the SU-25T, and that's why I have not put together a tutorial series specific to any of the Flaming Cliffs 3 planes, because they're essentially the same control configuration. There are some minor differences once you get into actually employing weapons. However, it's mainly with the air-to-air -air planes. The air-to-ground attack is all the same. I'm going to go ahead and hold my minus key to idle my engines and then hold down the W key to stop short of the runway. As you can see, flying the A10A is going to be very similar to flying the SU-25T. So if you want to follow along in the new tutorial series with a different Flaming Cliffs 3 plane, I recommend it. You're going to find that a lot of the controls are going to be very similar, if not identical, to the SU-25T. And if something is a little bit different, it won't be that difficult to go in and figure out what the differences are. Or you can always ask in the comments and I'll see if I can put together a quick video detailing what the differences are between, let's say, SU-25T Tutorial 7 attacking an air-to-air -air target in the SU-25T versus the F-15. The F-15 has a radar that you can use and a couple of other things that, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference there, but it's really not all that crazy. So I'd rather focus on the different things rather than re-film all of the similarities time after time. Um, so that's why I haven't put together a tutorial series for each of the Flaming Cliffs 3 planes. Hopefully this video was useful to you. If it was, go ahead and employ that thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, or if you used to be subscribed and saw all of my cooking videos and got tired of that, 
Uh, we are going to be doing a lot more tutorials here in the Flaming Cliffs 3 planes, or at least the SU-25T, and um, also putting together the A-10C tutorial series as well, so keep an eye out for that. And we're going to be building missions in order to go through the tutorials, so if you want to follow along in a little mission editor tutorial series that we're going to be putting together, um, feel free to subscribe for that as well. Anyway, everybody, hopefully you're having a great Tuesday night, and we'll see you in the next tutorial video.